Buon pomeriggio a tutti e benvenuti al Primaria Live. Io sono ancora qui a casa, io resto a casa, vedo ancora Luca nella finestrella, ormai sono abituato, so che c'è Max che è lì da qualche parte che ci sorveglia, anche se non lo vedo, e continuiamo in questa maniera, anche se presto speriamo di cambiare e speriamo come sempre di riabbracciarci. Allora, oggi è una giornata particolarmente importante perché finalmente arriva Oxford. Eh, un ospite nuovo, un ospite importante. La partnership tra Oxford University Press e Rizzoli Education è una partnership di vecchia data, lo sapete, ed è una partnership particolarmente importante, importante da molti punti di vista, tra l'altro ha dato mh, frutti editoriali che sono stati dei grandi frutti, basta pensare per esempio a Tritops, il corso per la scuola primaria, proprio per rimanere nel, nel nostro ambito, che è stato uno dei più grandi successi editoriali degli ultimi anni. Il 2020 però è particolarmente importante per Oxford perché nasce una nuova partnership, una partnership che in qualche modo è sempre in casa, quella eh, con Ericsson. Si sono messi insieme due nomi, due marchi molto importanti, Oxford da una parte e Ericsson dall'altra. Uniscono in qualche modo due mondi di ricerca. Oxford, il mondo della ricerca sulla metodologia dell'insegnamento dell'inglese. Ericsson, il mondo dell'inclusione e l'unione di questi due mondi ha dato origine a un frutto nuovo a una cosa molto importante che è Learn With Us, che è il nuovo corso per la scuola primaria Oxford del 2020. Oggi abbiamo con noi un consulente Oxford, Kiron Danton, e adesso, scusate, io ho visto comparire mentre lo dicevo, poteva aspettare un attimo, proprio nella finestrella lato Kiron che è appunto consulente didattico Oxford, che non avrei mai voluto che mi sentisse pronunciare il suo nome, ma adesso poi ve lo ridirà lui, si ripresenterà meglio. Allora, comunque, Kiron eh, è con noi, io vedo già il collegamento, tra poco ve lo lascio, e ci parlerà di metodologie didattiche per l'insegnamento dell'inglese proprio a partire da Learn With Us. Ciao Kiron, scusa per come ho detto il tuo nome e ti do la parola. So we'd like to thank you, Mauro, for that, uh, that lovely introduction. So I just wanted to introduce myself to you. My name is Kieran Downton and uh, I am the educational consultant for Piemonte, Valle d'Osta and Liguria. Uh, but more importantly, I, I am a teacher and I've taught students at all different levels, uh, primary, uh, middle school, scuola superiore and even adults. Actually, I've noticed that adults and children have uh, quite a lot in common as students. Um, another thing that I've also been involved in in the past is the, uh, the development and production of uh, the new Oxford primary course, Learn With Us. So uh, we'll be talking, or we're making a few references to that during the course of the presentation today. But of course, the thing we want to focus on the most is the, the methodology. In fact, thinking about that, uh, this is what we're going to actually be uh, looking at today in the seminar. Um, a first um, area that we'll think about together is um, the most efficient way that uh, our primary children learn, or perhaps the, um, the ways that they enjoy learning as well. Secondly, we'll be talking about how we can use some real world approaches to teaching English. And we'll also illustrate that thirdly, by some ide ideas that you can try in class to really bring that real world language to the students in a really enjoyable way as well. So then let's have a look at the answer to the first question. How exactly do primary children learn? Well, let's see. Um, here we have a, an interesting quotation on the screen um, that was uh, mentioned by a, a, an educator here. He says that one of the first things a young child learns is to talk about here and now. So what is here and now? Well, really that is our children's reality. And we can see that as well from the, the other sentence on the screen. Children learn from what they see and do in their everyday lives. So of course their, their everyday lives when they first come to Scuola Primaria is um, very few factors really, it's, it's very few areas. We can see just a few of them here. So uh, here we have our child in the middle of the screen and his world 
at the beginning, as you can see on the, the left of the screen is his home and his family. Also, uh, the next picture on the left is school friends too. That's a very important uh, aspect of his activity. Then on the right side of the screen, uh, school and uh, his, uh, what he's doing at school when he's at school. And uh, finally, at the, uh, the bottom of the page, notice also um, his, uh, all the times that he plays, whether it's uh, playing at home or playing in other places as well. These are the things that um, he understands it's areas of vocabulary in Italian that he knows and that are important to him. And of course, we know that as the student gets older, that world will gradually expand to embrace the whole world, as it were, when they, when they become adults or they become older students. So these are the areas really that they can also relate to and connect to when we use uh, and we teach English to them. So, closely connected to, to the importance then of, of, of providing that kind of input for them, we can see really how we can be effective in teaching them. We need to also create routines in our teaching. That's something that's quite easy to do because um, really every single lesson that we have gives us a perfect opportunity to give them routines. So we can include in those routines, as we can see on the slide, a real world context and examples We've already seen why that's so important, because it's something that the student relates to, that they understand, that they can see that it's useful to them in their everyday lives. Also, by having routines, we help the children learn by doing, by uh, actually um, doing some kind of activity that involves the, uh, the vocabulary, the language that we're teaching. And then also by means of routines, we present opportunities to reinforce, repeat, and revised language. So really routines can be very simple. It might be that we have um, um, an English time when we begin the lesson. Maybe we, uh, we perhaps wear a, a badge or a hat that really distinguishes the English lesson for being something different. Also many teachers use something called a day chart where we have a sort of a poster where we can um, put different flashcards in according to um, the day, the date, the weather as well. So again, this becomes um, a regular routine that the children can use to learn and uh, really use language that again is connected to their real life. So those are just uh, a few suggestions. Um, something that's closely connected to routines is also repetition. So we see the question there, why is repetition so important? Well, repetition is something that children enjoy. Uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed that, that many children, certainly when I was a child, um, I enjoyed hearing the same story, the same bedtime story over and over again. So it's something that children enjoy. It's also something that we can use and exploit when we are teaching English, because to learn a new word, even in our own language, we need to hear that or that, that word many times in many different contexts. So repetition is what allows us to do that. Connected to that, it also means that um, when we use repetition, it makes what we learn memorable. It also helps with word recognition skills. So through repetition, the students are able to, to recognize a word in a sentence. They're able to get information from a sentence and they're also able to um, create a, a context to be able to understand um, what is being said. And connected to that again, we also see that um, repetition helps to develop both speaking and listening skills. Um, if we think about it, this is what happened when we learned our mother tongue. Really, when we were very small children, when we were babies, we just uh, sat at home and we listened to our parents use certain words in certain situations, certain sentences in certain situations, and then once we'd been listening for a while, uh, at a certain point, we began repeating those same sentences and words in similar situations. So this is a very natural language learning style. So what kind of formula do we have in our classroom when we put all of these factors together, when we, we have a real world context, we have real world settings and also have uh, that routine and repetition? Well, this is the situation we have. We create a fertile um, classroom, we could say a fertile ground 
for communication, for real meaningful communication for the children about their everyday lives. Um, and we, we really create um, a meaningful, uh, a meaningful um, way of communicating according to um, what is important to them as well. So uh, let's make sure that we do include those, uh, those factors in our teaching if we can. Now, closely related to what we're talking about here is also another area of our teaching, which I know you've been doing already for, for many, many years, and that is competency-based learning. We say that it's closely connected to the, the real world input, because really uh, competencies are based on real world, aren't they? They're, they're based on, on teaching and using real world situations to help our students to develop skills, which then they can use um, in their lives, their, their real lives now and also in the future as well. But also on the slide, we see another very important um, point um, for, for doing this and teaching in this way. Notice the slide says, that competency-based learning empowers learners to focus on mastery of valuable skills and knowledge and also learn at their own pace. So that's interesting and that's very important because we have students with different um, levels of abilities, of different ways of learning, so we want to create a classroom that, that benefits everybody and allows everybody uh, a place to be able to learn as we see there at their own pace, at their own speed. So how can we, how can we do that? What, what is a factor that we can keep in mind in the exact teaching methodologies that we use when we are focusing on teaching these competences through uh, repetition and routines and real life input? Well, I think um, the photograph on this slide, you can see the photograph just at the, at the top there is very interesting. Now, when I ask teachers what they can see, some say a duck, some say a sponge. Well, of course, it's both. But really, the, the point is that very often when we do training, maybe the teacher trainer says that uh, very young children and primary age children especially are like, are like sponges. They soak up everything they learn. Well, this is true in a way, but it's also um, not quite true. Because if you think about it, if you, if you have a sponge and you put it in water and then you, you take it out again, what happens? Does all of the water stay in the sponge? Well, obviously not. Um, a lot of water stays in the sponge, but a lot of water also comes back out again. And um, really, this is maybe more um, a more precise way of talking about our students' learning. We, we teach them. Certainly, they remember a lot and they learn a lot, but they don't remember everything. And um, this is normal. This is um, this is normal for us as well as, as as adults, as human beings. So really, what we what we want to do through through teaching competences and through the materials that we use is teach in a way that um, means that the maximum amount that we teach will stay in the student's mind and uh, that they'll learn um, the, the maximum amount possible. It won't always be everything, but we can try to make sure that it's, it's as much as possible. And in this slide, we can see one of the first ways that we can make sure that that happens by helping the students to participate actively in uh, in the, in the lesson so so not being passive not just watching us but being part of the lesson and here we've got just a little suggestion about how you could do that one of the many ways this is a um uh, these are two pages from um the, the course that i worked on actually the new new oxford course learn with us but if you look at the bottom of the page uh, notice that we have um some pictures of some different classroom objects so um, we, we won't use all of them, but notice that we have some crayons, that's the first picture, then some scissors, then a pencil, a pencil case, um, a school bag, some stickers, also a book and a rubber. So what we suggest you do is um, before your students listen to anything, before they watch a song, just use the flashcards of these objects and teach the children the words and the actions. So, so stand in front of them, show them the cards, 
and uh, get them to, to repeat the word, uh, to do the action. Obviously, you might need to do this a few times. So you just stand there. And, and for example, if you hold up the flashcard of the scissors, then you show them this one. So this is something to do before you even listen or watch anything. Because when we do that, we help the students really to, to tune in. All of, all of the class then will be able to, to master the, uh, the actions, the, uh, the, the gestures for the, the items, and also be able to learn the words and then pick out the words by the time they listen to the song or watch the video. So we can make sure that we don't have a situation where some students are doing the actions because they've learned them and others maybe are just standing, dancing a little bit, um, pretending or, or enjoying the song, but, but not really grasping the vocabulary that's being taught to them. So by doing this, we can make sure that all have a part in the video. So would you like to see the video of the song? Well, uh, here it is. I've got it on the slide for you. So let's watch it together and let's learn a few real life classroom objects in, a, in this very catchy and memorable song. So we hope you enjoyed that. And uh, of course, uh, again, we can see that that real life link, everything that we've been talking about here is being put into action. So these are objects that our students know, that they use in, uh, in their world, in their lives. And um, we've, we've used repetition to really reinforce that vocabulary with them. So this is the first way that we can help um, students really um, grasp those competencies, grasp what we're trying to teach them. Notice here we have the second way. The other way we help them is to learn by cooperating. So let's have a look at um, really an extension of the activity that we've just done. This, uh, as you can see, is an example from the first level of Learn With Us. We go back again to our flashcards. So this time you can use them in a different way. You can use them um, just like a card game with the students. So the students could be um, one team or you could maybe have different teams and you are the teacher that has the cards. So you've already taught them um, the, the items of vocabulary. So you've already taught them the uh, obviously the crayons, the scissors, the pencil, pencil case, school bag, stickers. Uh, book and rubber. We won't worry about the other ones for now, but maybe you could just start with those eight um, different words. So then all you need to do is use the use the uh, flashcards as cards, have the cards facing towards you so the students can't see them, and then one student at a time, or maybe one team of students at a time, you, you go up to them and you say to them, what have I got? And um, they have to guess. Um, or get one of the cards right. So maybe you could have um, perhaps three or four of the words that you've taught them, three or four that you haven't, maybe not all of the items. And if they get the right item, if they guess one of the things that you've got, then obviously praise them, um, take the card out of the ones that you're showing, tell them they've got x-ray eyes, they really enjoy that, um, and then go to the next team. Of course, the next team though, or the next student has to remember what the other team or the other students have already said. So they maybe have to work together as a team, they have to remember and make sure they don't repeat what's already been said to make sure that they eliminate all of the cards and guess everything that you've got. So this really provides a lovely opportunity for the students to be able to, uh, to cooperate together to make sure that they beat the teacher, that they make sure that they, they win the card game that they're playing with you. So this is just one example. Again, of course, there are there are many others that we can use and many, many, many other opportunities in this course. 
So the third way that we can um, really help students to, to learn through a repetition, through routines, through real life situations is helping them to develop that, that precious competence, learning to learn, in this case, through authentic tasks done by real authentic children. And here we have an example of that. This is um, this is quite a high level, actually. This is level five of, um, of Learn With Us. And in this lesson, the students learn to give directions. So notice the first exercise, they, they've already been given some vocabulary in a previous exercise, but the, the exercise three here is to give the students a bit of practice and um, write down or think down, write down about how they would give directions uh, to somebody from a place in their town to school. Then after that, we have a specific language in action exercise where they watch a video of this dialogue. But as we watch the video together now, notice um, who it is that is asking for directions and giving directions. So here we go. Let me just press play. Excuse me, can you tell me the way to Buckingham Palace? Yes, of course. Turn right, go straight on, go past the hotel and turn left. The palace is on your left. Thank you. So we hope you enjoyed that. Um, notice though that this is a dialogue with real children who are the same age as our students. So it's something that attracts their attention, that they're interested in, that, um, that really helps them to understand that it's, it's something that they, they could also do if they were in the same situation. So it might be that somebody English asks them for directions in their city and their town, and here they have a, a model of children, of their, their own peers doing the same thing. So let's go on to our, our next point. Something else that we want to help our students to do through um, teaching competences is to be able to construct their own knowledge. So this is really important. Um, it, it becomes even more important now in, in the rest of their scholastic lives and also their working lives as well. We often have to go and find information. We have to um, understand that information and put it together in some way. So here we have an exercise that allows them to do that. This is called My Project. It's something that's found uh, very frequently in uh, the Learn With Us um, course. And um, if you look, we can see there are three different steps that the student has to follow. The first one is uh, to complete the diagram. Here we have a, a Venn diagram. I know it's called the same thing in Italian and in English. So the student has to, to think of some team sports, for the diagram. So maybe it could be football, rugby, um, individual sports, so they might think of, think of things like swimming, tennis, and then both. We have cycling as an example. Of course, swimming and tennis could also be both, um, or could be individual sports and team sports as well. Then once they've done that, once they've thought of a few words, in part two, they have the chance to do a little bit of research. So notice that the, that the character that's uh, presenting this level of the book has also done his research and the student can do the same thing. So they can find information on the internet, photos, more information, and then um, also write a little article if they can. And then finally, once they've done all of this work, once they've had this information, they can answer some questions about the sportsman. So uh, they've done this work, they've done their research, they're able to um, produce knowledge on the subject, on the project that they're doing. Finally, the other thing that we want to help our students to do is to check or control their own learning process. Uh, maybe this is, this is something that we're not so used to doing in the classroom, but it's something that is, is very beneficial because um, it can create a real motivation for the student to learn. And the way that we want to do it is to, to not focus on what, or, or the student doesn't focus on what they don't know, but they focus on what they do know. And then when they realize what they don't know, we, we would hope this would motivate them to, to fill in those gaps. And again, Learn With Us gives them an opportunity to do that. This is um, a, a very strong feature of the third level. This is a 
my progress page. So when the student's done uh, one of the units, they have um, some questions and they can um, decide or they think for themselves whether they can do these things or not. In fact, notice um, in each box, it begins in unit one, two, three, four, whatever, um, I can do these things. So for example, unit one, I can say the names of animals in danger. I can read and understand a story about friends. I can work with a partner to play a card game. And then they have their own target for the next unit as well um, about what they would like to learn. So again, notice we see they think about what they are able to do, the positive things they've done, uh, and also um, maybe just fill in the gaps, maybe work on what they don't know by, uh, by um, assessing this for themselves. Also, of course, for you as a teacher, it's very useful to see this page because if a lot of students are saying that they are not able to do something, so if, if all of the students are not ticking the second box, then that will maybe help us to know what we need to go back and work on again with them. So then, um, that's uh, the last of the suggestions that we have for you, the practical suggestions in really being able to use this real world input to, uh, to help the children develop their competences. So how can we, or in a few words, what, what have we learned in this presentation? Well, really, we've seen that the more real world input we give to the students, the more language we get out. They see that um, what they're learning is, is relevant and is connected to their world and what they already know, so it motivates them much more. But along with giving them that real world input, remember that this is, or many things can't just be done once. We need to remember to have routine. Of course, a routine is a, is a very real world thing for all of us, but also repetition as well, to really um, reinforce what the students are learning and to help them to be able to remember um, what they've studied in their lessons. And then perhaps most importantly, the third point, experiment and have fun with English in class. So we have lots of activities in, in the books. Um, maybe think about how you can personalize some of those activities for the class, how you can make them more interesting for the students and for you as a teacher as well. And, and when we do that, we can make sure that we're really having fun with the students, that we're enjoying the lesson, that they're enjoying the lesson, and um, that really um, English becomes a positive experience for them and um, really something that, that they can enjoy, not just in, in, in primary school, but also in Scuola Media, Scuola Superiore and the rest of their lives as well. They can really enjoy uh, language learning and uh, language acquisition. So then we'd like to thank you for listening to the, uh, the Oxford part of uh, Rizzoli Primaria Day. Um, we hopefully, hopefully this is methodology that you can really continue and use in your classrooms when you go back. And um, if you would like to know any more about the Learn With Us course, please talk to um, the Oxford Educational Consultant that is in your area, or of course your Rizzoli agents as well, and they can give you more information and show you the course. So thank you very much. And um, I look forward to meeting everybody in the future. Grazie Kiron, grazie di tutto, eh, allora grazie a tutti voi, noi ci vediamo la prossima settimana per un grande appuntamento live, grazie mille, arrivederci.